What's up? What's up? Okay. Flo, Jesus, Flo, you're the first one on. What's up, Flo? What's up, Scotsman? Uh, Flo, I'm going to connect with you, Flo, right now as people are connecting. Here we go. Flo Sheezy. What's up, Chewy? Goodbye, Chewy. Love you, Chewy. What's up, Chew Dizzle? You know I don't play around, boy. You know I'm on time, <laughs> baby. You know I'm on time, baby. Well, you're not the typical B-boy then no, because B-boys, man, I had a, K-Mel was like a day late. <laughs> well, I definitely want to talk about that too. I just, I really want to talk about that on time shit. <laughs> well, let's talk about it right now. We brought it up. No. So the thing is, is about being in the industry and me doing what I'm doing for so many years. The number one thing I learned is you better be early or you better be on time. I'm telling you, people don't play that shit. You, you, you just, you're gone. So a lot of stuff that happens in the street, you got to leave it in the street and be professional. And that's one thing I learned is staying professional. So well, you, you know, said 1030, I was here at 1025 waiting for you to click on. Hey, hey what's up, Willpower, B-Boy Willpower. Willpower in the house, what's up, baby? All the way from Denmark, by the way. Oh, Willpower lives in Denmark? No, he got stuck there. Oh. They shut down all the flights. Yikes. That ain't good. But listen, to, oh, shit, Steen. Steen is on. What's up, Steen? Popper Steen, one of the greatest poppers alive. You know Steen, right? Come on. No, I don't know Steen. Okay. Steen is incredible. Listen, um, I heard Keanu Reeves has been so successful because he's been on time. I mean, we could all say that Keanu Reeves is not the best actor, but right. he is very easy to work with, very mm -hmm. humble, respectful, and always on time. And that's why he's still around, and that's why he worked as long as he worked. You, the one thing you gotta remember in showbiz, you gotta be on time, you gotta know people's names. Yeah, okay, well, I, I don't even know anyone's names. Let's talk about you. <laughs> I really don't. I can't remember anyone's name. But listen, what? Let's talk about you because uh, Flo. I think I first. This is a really weird story, but I met you by watching you. I never met you because I was a big fan of yours from the VHS tapes. Right. I used to hang out with Will Power, and uh, Will and I would would uh, watch tapes, and you were like on those early tapes. Mm -hmm. I'm getting a little bit of a uh, echo on your end, though. Are you? It, I don't know. Sure you're at. Well, I'm not echoing, and and you don't sound like you're echoing, so maybe it is mine. Is it? Is it mine? Because I'm on good Wi-Fi. That's one thing. Everybody, I'm let me know. Can you? Is am I still echoing? Echo, echo. Am I echoing still? No, I'm, I'm echoing. Not you. Oh, you echoing? I'm like. So anyway, yeah, so I started watching you on um, on tapes, on VHS tapes. That's how I saw you, like in the early Rocksteady tapes with Ken Swift. And you. that's the first time I ever saw you. And I was like, I don't know who this guy is, but he's incredible. You're, you're probably one of the best um, musical dancers that's ever been around. Like you are... You have a very uncanny ability to ride the beat, to have fun with the beat, to play with it. And you're, and you're successful in so many things because you're a great locker. You're, uh, you're not a great popper, but you're a great locker. You're, <laughs> you're an amazing b-boy, but really you're an incredible dancer. There's very few people who could do all of those things successfully. What is your secret? Hard work. And don't say no just one. because you're black, because that's not no. a fair, <laughs> well, black that, this, that plays a major part of it. <laughs> it really does. I know no, it does. No, it's, no. it's true. See, you got to look at me my early days when I first started. I was not on the beat. The beat was the last thing that I was looking for. Because, OK, I, let me explain why I started dancing. OK. I always say, like, you look at interviews, I always say I started because of the women. That was a lie, but I did. Part of it was with the women, but the major reason why I started dancing is because I was getting bullied. 
Okay. I was, I was getting beat up. I was getting my shoes taken, my jackets taken, my glasses taken, my money taken. Like, I remember Duck, my my, this girl named Tyra. Like, I know these people's names from the back of my, just in the back of my head. And I saw all the top guys who was dancing was always getting protected by the bullies. The bullies always protect the dancers. And I was like, maybe if I start dancing, the bullies will leave me alone. And that's when I really started learning how to dance to start battling people because I wanted to stop getting bullied. And when I started beating some of the top dancers in my school, Gaithersburg High, um, Gaithersburg High School, because I was back, because I, I live in Maryland, when I started beating a lot of them guys, the bully was like, if anybody touched Jerry, Jerry's my real name, I wasn't flow master at the time. So I said, if anybody touched Jerry, we're going to have problems. And that's when I was like, this is what I want to do. I want to So you had people that were actually... Strong. So you, because of your dancing, you had other people who admired your dancing that would protect you. A hundred percent. And that's why I started, really started dancing. That's why when you see me battle people and I lose or something, I don't, I don't get mad. My, just, my whole goal was to make sure that you're not going to bully me. I don't mm -hmm. give a damn how well you beat me or what move you did. As long as I can see in your eye that you be like, God damn, Flo was hard. I beat him, but he was hard. I won. And I was cool with it. So Flo, you're from uh, you Maryland. are from Baltimore, right? No, Gaithersburg, Maryland. Baltimore is like 45 minutes away from Gaithersburg, Maryland. So I'm from okay, Gaithersburg, so, Maryland, not Baltimore, Maryland. I mean, you're from a tough neighborhood, obviously. I was raised in a ghetto, food stands, government cheese, people getting shot outside. Yes, I was. I was in the hood. My mother didn't let me go outside as much. So I was raised. So you, I was raised in the hood. And do you have brothers and sisters? Yes, I have a brother. I, well, well, my dad got remarried and had two other kids. So I have two sisters and three brothers. Okay. Yeah. Okay. First of all, I have to yeah. shout out all these freaking people. DJ Mike Murder, who, by the oh, way, that was a great... Oh, in the house. Woo! I got to talk about Mike Murder, boy. Well, <laughs> you, I mean, that was a great video that you put out on Mike about how working hard, persistence, dedication. You were a blue belt. He was a white belt. Now he's a black belt. And he's tapping you like crazy. He's, he's shout out. Listen. Go ahead. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, no. So shout out to Spence BJJ. And of course, Why Not, who uh, is on here as well. Everybody is here. Let's be honest. People are coming and going because they're jumping on other things. Don't leave. It's, what's the point of leaving? We're right here. It's all good. Um, so do you want to talk about why uh, you want to talk about Mike Murder real fast? And, and well, no, Mike, 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 Mike Murder is, is, is a true student. I mean, seeing where he started compared to when, you know, when, when I just, just, when I made that video, I used to tap Mike, Mike Murrow out with no problem. Like, I'd be talking on the phone, yeah, Mike got you, tap, yeah, yeah, mom, you say tap, <laughs> tap him out with no problem. But Mike stayed so true to the game. Yeah. Now, I'm training with him. Now, he's like, what, mom? Tap flow math out, tap flow math out. <laughs> I can't even get one position. I can't even do anything because he puts in work. And I tell people, so you, so you ask me, what is my secret to be on the music and stuff? I put in work. You have to put in work. You want to be great, you have to put in work. When I say put in work, you can't just, you can't get scared to be embarrassed. You can't be scared to get your ass whipped. You're going to get your ass whipped. You've got to be the nail before you become the hammer. And that's what Mike did. He became the, um, he was the nail for a long time. Now he's a hammer. Man got a black belt. He's teaching classes. He's fighting world-class jujitsu guys, like, psh, come on, man. I stopped putting in the work. He put in the work, so of course, he's going to put my I, I, fi I find that, I understand that, like, with my art is the one thing that I continue. But you know, Flo, I don't know if you know this about me, but I was a professional ping pong player. And oh, when I, I was 12, that. when I was 12, I was ranked two in the United States. And I was training with a guy named Dick Miles, who was a world-class Olympic-level ping-pong player. And it sounds funny to say I was a world-class ping-pong player. But I used to go to Chinatown and, and, and beat everybody, all the, you know, all the Chinese kids in the firehouse. I would destroy them. I played at Marty Reisman's ping-pong parlor. I used to gamble. It was like I was a New York City uh, ping-pong champion. I used to play at the United Table Tennis Association in New Jersey. And I... I I stopped doing it because I was so embarrassed because I I lost to like a 50 year old woman in a big con in a big competition, and I was so humiliated that I didn't have the wherewithal to pull myself up 
you know, and the stick to itness, like like Mike did with jujitsu, and you did with dance, and I quit. And I, and I've done I've done that in my life periodically. You know, if I'm not the best, I don't want to do it. You know, and I, I I know people that are definitely like that. Now, art is different for me because I stuck with it. But I know for a fact that I've definitely been a quitter and a sore loser if I'm not shining. And I, I feel like most people do that. It's hard to be the best because it takes fucking it, hard work. Being the best is illusion. That's all illusion. You cannot be the best. Ice Cube said it best. They have a new nigga next year. And listen, look at the UFC. You go down the line of the UFC. Matt, you got Matt Hughes, BJ Penn came, then GSP. And then um, um, Anderson Silva, then um, um, John Jones. If you now Conor McGregor is the thing. First Ronda Rousey, now it's Conor McGregor. You have so many people. It's not the such thing as being the best. You can't be the best in the world. The only thing you can be the best of is you. And you gotta have downfalls. You have to have setbacks. You gotta train with people that's gonna whip your ass because that's how you get better. No, I, I, I listen. I I understand that more than anybody with art. I love putting myself in positions of people better than me. It makes me better. You know, steel sharpens steel, iron sharpens iron. Exactly. But, but exactly. you did mention Anderson Silva, and people don't know this about you because your main, you're, you're a bit of a renaissance man. You dance, you, uh, you, you know, you, you, do two, you do two completely diametrically opposed things in the realm of dancing, which is locking and b-boying. And you also... You know, you've been fighting for years and you've been training with Anderson Silva. Yeah. Tell us about that, because not many people have been able to even get close to that experience. And certainly not many people can ever say they, you know, they sparred in the ring with Anderson Silva. That's crazy. Yeah. Well, let me tell you how I met Anderson Silva. Anderson okay. Silva was, when I saw him on the UFC beating up everybody, I was like, that's the guy I want to be like. I mean, he was my Ken Swift. Ken Swift was my B-born for B-born. But Anderson Silva was my Ken Swift for MMA. I was like, my dream, I used to go to bed at night saying, I want to meet Anderson Silva. I don't have to train with him, I just want to meet him. So I was training with my boy Tavista. Tavista was, um, he sponsored me for Sinister. So if you see the S, do you remember Sinister? Sinister was around that, Nagara, Anderson Silva, Chuck, Chuck, uh -huh. Riddell was all wearing. Yeah. Well, they started sponsoring me for dancers. So I used to go down to the where, you know, to the warehouse because they had a cage. And me and my boy Tabitha used to practice MMA. So one day mm -hmm. he called me and he knew how much I loved Anderson. He called me one day. He was like, dude, get down here now. I said, dude, we're not training until one o'clock. He said, just get down here. I got stuff to do. Please get down here early. So I got my Anderson Silva shirt on, my, just my shorts. <laughs> I thought I was Anderson Silva. I walk in the warehouse. As I'm walking in the back, going to the cage, who's sitting in the cage warming up with his partner? Anderson Silva. This is when he's getting ready to fight James Irvin for the first light heavyweight title in the UFC. And I was like, and, and he said to me, hi. And I was like, my eye. So me and Tavis is just training, right? So we put on the MMA glove. We set the timer. Right when the timer goes, ding, ding, Anderson takes my boy, pushes out the way and says, I go with him. And I was like, oh, shit. I got to send you the picture. It was the best ass whooping. I'm getting my ass whipped, but I'm smiling the whole oh, time as I'm getting beat up. And as he got finished, he was like, we're family now. And I've been with him ever since. And, and, you, it, still it, it, and you still train with him? Time after time, yes. I still train with Anson. Anson Silva is still my teacher, you know, besides Eric Paulson. Eric, Eric Paulson is my ground teacher, but Anson is for MMA and standing up. So what is it like in a sentence or less to train with Anderson Silva? Uh, man, it is amazing. Getting beat up by one of the best. Like, he changed MMA. Like, he did stuff in MMA that people never sure. thought was possible. And people are doing John Jones. He made a John John Jones, yeah. you know, a Conor McGregor, even though Conor don't say it. Like, just to get in there and train and be for Anderson to call me his training partner, it's like, man, everything in MMA, I... I am so happy. It is. Do, it's, do, you, it's, 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 do you think that your your dancing has made you a better fighter? In other words, like I was a really good fake fighter, like because I was <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, because you know, like I was top rocking, so I used to like 
you know, slap, I would slap, we would all fight in New York. We would fight right. in the lunchroom, after school. It would start with slap boxing and eventually someone would get hit and next thing you know, we're throwing hands. Right. This happened on a weekly level. But right. I was very good at perpetrating like I could fight because I could top rock and up rock. And then I would throw in like a couple of like, you know what I mean? Uh, a couple of moves and people could be like, yo, boy, man, he can fuck you up. But I couldn't fuck anybody up because, but I feel like if you actually were practically applying some of the footwork and techniques, then I feel like there's a value there for, uh, for footwork. That, dancing helped me survive in fighting because when, when I get in front of somebody, MMA fight or whatever, and then I'm seeing them, I'm, this, I'm getting their rhythm. I'm getting everything mm -hmm. that they're doing. I'm, I'm just I'm catching their rhythm. And once I catch their rhythm, then as they're throwing punches, I'm doing the rhythm that they was doing with their punches. And that is just the whole beat. And then by doing the whole top, the top rock and house music, it helps me get out of, you know, the way faster. So dancing helped me out so much. And I'm training fighters now, like my girl Tiffany Van Sue. She's the world kickboxer. I'm teaching her house dancing. Because house to me is one of the best ways for fighters, like if you ask any fighter, or if if I had to teach a fighter, the number one um, style of dance that I would teach it is house, because house is all football. You know that's so interesting you say that because I've been I've been kind of addicted to house lately, and I you know growing up in New York, I've been very narrow minded, popping, breaking. That's it. I don't even want to talk about locking. Like, I, no offense, but I was like, oh, no. locking is gross. Take that's how I felt you know what I mean like it's just like a it's like a New York it's like a New York insular like just bigoted mentality just like like I hate rocking I hate how but then I think now as I've gotten you know older I feel like house is my favorite because I feel like there's the most possibilities and then you get dancers you know like you know I mean I, I I always love Odessa and Brian Green yes, and all so. those guys, of course. Brian of course. Ford Green, yes. Yeah. Because I've seen them live. And when, I, when I started seeing them live, I was like, yo, yo, there's, I mean, I almost feel like popping sucks now. You know what I mean? As much as I love popping. But but now, like the new dancers, they're doing popping, mixed with mm -hmm. b-boying, mixed with how. It's like everything is coming into one funnel. And yes. then you're getting, and then you're getting guys like, you know, I know, I know you don't love them, but Lay Twins, who I think are incredible. I know now, you have I, Now, hold on now, now. Now, before you put stuff up, I'm not saying I don't love them, because I think they're awesome dancers. I just don't like their attitude. Yeah, no, I, I know just, they I just, I just, I just, I just feel that when you're that dope and you have so many people surrounding you and they love you, be, be, just be a good superhero. Don't be a villain. Don't, right. don't be a dick. Don't well, that's the same reason that you don't love Ronda Rousey and Conor McGregor. No way. I think you well, know. Love now I know. I now I love Ronda Rousey and I love Conor for what how they train and how they mindset. But outside the ring, how they treat and how they you know how she was saying how Holly Holmes. I'm gonna whip Holly Holmes' ass and I'm gonna put her in a new home. She's glad to be fighting me. I'm like, girl, what? Yeah. What? Why? Be humble about it. Be be happy that you opened the door for women in the maid. You know, because remember, Dana didn't want women, and Rhonda changed all that. And it's like yeah. certain people don't know how much power when they have it. You have to be good. That's why, to me, the most incredible boxer or fighter of all time is Muhammad Ali. Because it wasn't how good he was in the ring; it's what he was outside the ring. My well, I mean, I think he's. A, I think I think he's the greatest athlete of all, all time. time, and he yeah. lost no. so many times. But he's to me the greatest of all times for what he did outside the ring. And if you if you've seen the last dance, you will then say Michael Jordan is right there with him because Michael yeah. Jordan is just. Did you have you seen the last dance? I seen I seen a little bit of it, but I haven't seen the whole thing. You you got no it. What. And by the way, uh, not not to like you know inflate your ego, but many people on the on this thus far has said that you should be a motivational speaker because the way you talk with the it's it's an infectious contagious kind of energy of positivity that people really like. I think that's a really good idea that for you. I well, think that's a good career. That's a good career for you. You, you know who's my good inspiration? Because you got to remember, 
one of my biggest things, because people have good downfall, you know, people have stuff that they're trying to fix and something that they were, was insecure about. My biggest insecure was talking. If you look at me, if you looked at me in Rocksteady, when I did an interview with Rock Steady Crew, I was like this while Wiggles was talking. And then they asked, they asked me something, and I go, yeah. Uh-huh, one of the best. <laughs> and I hated that. So do you know who my big inspiration is for talking? Besides me, who is it, Flo? <laughs> David Avocado Wolf. I can see that. I, I, well, this, David's a great started, talker. No, but the way he talks is like, makes you understand it. Like, it's like, wow. I got, my mom I got, said something. My mom what? said, my mom who's 82 said something very insightful about David Wolf. She said, when men talk to me, they usually look through me because I'm an old lady. Right? No, it's true. Like, men no, will no. be more attentive to a pretty woman. Like, oh, okay, yeah, that's it. But David, she said, when David speaks to me, he speaks to me like, I'm yeah. as important as the supermodel over here, which is a which is a really good thing to do. And I think David is, you know, like him, hate him, whatever. He's a polarizing character, but I think he's very good at speaking to everybody equally. And he has the ability, like many great speakers, to feel like you're the only person in the room. Yes. I think Tony. I think Tony Robbins is an incredible. Oh, Tony! Well, my wife works with him, so that's where I started my plant base, my whole health stuff from Tony Robbins. And he got his whole plant based from David. Yeah, Tony got his plant based from David. Oh, they were great friends. Yeah, they were they were like best friends back in the day. I didn't know that. That's how he got into the whole raw foods. Wow. Yeah, that was David and him were like this back in the days. Then they went on different trajectories. You know, David became broke and Tony became rich. No kidding. But David, you know. But I think it's a, I think it's a, um, I think it's a good, a good career for you because you could also blend it with your dancing and your inspiration and health and nutrition. I mean, look, you've come a long way, Flo, as an individual as well, because when I met you at a raw food retreat, you were interested in the information, but during lunch you were going to get McDonald's, and I was like, what are you doing? Let's get you. I mean, I was the one that kind of brought you into the kingdom of superfoods. And I was ready to say that you was the one you were the one that introduced me to the guy who changed my life. You know, like, like really made it bring it all together for athletes. And that's Brandon Brazier. You introduced them like people people don't understand or people don't know that you introduced um, Brandon Brazier to me. And he screwed me on all stuff about information about pH and all that stuff for athletes because I remember when I came to you I said okay Dave is giving me some good information and you're giving me good information but I need something for athletes because athletes mm -hmm. are different from regular people so the way David was saying was more for health and not get cancer and all that which I definitely appraise but I needed something for athletes because I'm boxing I'm just I'm out yeah. there battling I'm out there getting it yeah. but my body was always drained by just eating plants so I needed somebody to help me out with trying to find more mm. foods to eat. And that's when you said, oh, I got a friend named Brandon Brazier. Man, this guy is, is the man. I was like, can you introduce me to me? To me? And then you had him call me up, and the rest is history. And that's because of you introduced well, uh, him. Yeah, and that was a good relationship for you. And I think that you've gotten super healthy. And you know, look at a lot of people who have been able to peak, and they kind of burn out. Yes. You know, physically, there's a lot of ways to burn out, right? I mean, you can burn out with lack of sleep. I was actually reading this morning that lack of sleep is the number one, one of the number one ways for cancer cells to replicate, to have a chance to replicate is because you're losing sleep, um, which, you know, people don't know, but we all have cancer cells in our body. It's just a matter of them going, going haywire or not. And we could do things to control that. And one of them is actually getting good sleep, preferably in the circadian rhythm down with the sun, you know, up with the sun. That uh, yeah. doesn't happen for normal people, obviously. <laughs> we live in, you know what I mean? We just, it's hard because, to do that. Because, because we have Netflix. Right here. I the, know. That's this this shit right here. Right yeah, here. it's true. Right Wait a minute. If that's the shit right there, what are you on right now? What is filming you? What do you mean? Oh, I'm on my iPad. It's oh, bigger. okay. Got I got my pro iPad so I can see it because I don't want to be like this. Okay. Okay, I got so Jay a solo asked, you have to ask Flo about his Usher relationship. Please 
We want to know. I think you and Usher are best friends, besides me and yes, you. Yes, well, you're second best. We're not best friends. Me and Usher's family. I mean, I've been, I've been with wow. him from the beginning of the My Way, and you make me wanna. I mean, we are family. Like that's that's my little brother right there, man. We've been through so much. I've been to when I was going through it, when he was going through it, when he broke, you got it bad. Like, I mean, we've been together for so much. We've been up and we've been down, you know. And and, 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 he, and you've taught him. A lot about dancing, right? A hundred percent. Me, Todd, Sands, and Fly, and all that. We just because he's a, he's a very house. like he's a very good dancer. I mean, in terms of the pop stars out there, I would say he's probably one of the best. So Flo is everyone can see me, right? Flo is frozen. Flo, you might be able to hear us, but you're frozen. I think you don't know that. Can everybody else hear me? Let's keep going with this. Everybody could hear me chime in. Oh, Flo's gone. That's okay. He'll be back. Okay, so let's see. Flo's going to come back. There he is. And there we go. One sec, guys. Here we go. I don't know what happened. It just threw me off. Uh, do you, did you turn your notifications off and your ringer off and everything? Yeah, nothing, yeah. Okay. I did okay. That, yeah, for sure. I don't know what Okay, I, you're I, welcome, Jay. Um, I, I asked him, you got an answer, because I would say in the pop world of dancing, I would give J-Lo, Usher, you know, some of them are just really good. Chris Brown's pretty good, right? But, man, Chris Brown, listen, Chris Brown gets it in. I mean, that guy should have been a professional dancer, too, because he does not play around. Chris Brown gets it in. If you, you have feel pleasure, like... What? You think Usher's better than Chris? In what? In dance. In dancing? Oh, hell yeah. no. Chris, Chris, listen, I love Usher. Listen, we keep it real, and Usher know it. I told Usher 100%. Chris Brown will whip Usher's ass. But, really? in saying, Usher will whip Chris Brown's ass. Come on, man. Usher sounds like a record. Have you ever heard him? Usher, one thing about Usher, he wants to sound just like the record. How Michael Jackson said, I want you to play it the way I wrote it because I want to sing it the way I wrote it. Usher's the same way. He doesn't like lip syncing. He doesn't like nothing, none of that. Usher, to me, Usher is the wedding. Chris Brown is the reception. Mm. You want to get off in the reception with the love and all that? Like, Usher's the man. Would you say that Michael Jackson is the best dancer that's ever been dancer-singer? So when you say dancing now, what are you saying dancing? Because you got dancing in the club, you got dancers on the stage. Michael Jackson is the best entertainer ever, period. He has changed the game. Okay. Before, I agree Michael Jackson is by far the best entertainer in the world. Ever. Now you right now. Up. You hear me? Yes. I, I Remember, you. Mike I'm, Jackson, I'm Mike, Mike Jackson, Michael Jackson. Michael Jackson got a lot of his stuff from James Brown. He took James Brown, the king of soul, and made it into his cell and just, just, just took it to another level, man. I mean, Michael took it to another level, but it all started from James Brown. Can you it was seen in the street dance. Seen. Can you not see me? Hold on, you're freezing up. Like, no, no, I don't see you. Okay, now, there, there you go. Say it again. Hold on one sec. My daughter's trying to get in here. Here we go. Look at this. Hey. Hey, um, said we can. Oh, we can hear both. Hey, what's up? Hey, what's <laughs> going on? She's creating havoc right now. Oh. Oh, she's Whoa. out. And okay, gone. Bye. Say and bye. And action. And action. <laughs> so what now? Jake. What you say so, so I, I would say, you would say Chris Brown right now is the greatest dancer in the music game? Hell yeah. Chris, man, Chris Brown will slay you in dancing because he puts in the work. He, he's always there. He's getting in there with the kids. He's going to clubs. Like, I remember when he came to the um, freestyle session, I mean, the boy danced from the beginning he walked in there until he left, and everybody's looking like, 
Chris Brown is in a circle. Chris Brown is getting it. Like, I mean, the boy doesn't stop. I'm like, the boy got ADD. He, he, he doesn't stop. Would you say J-Lo he, is a great And he dancer? will battle you. He will battle you, for sure. You would, destroy, you would destroy Chris Brown in a battle. Please tell me. Well, it's, it's, it's a different thing because this is my world. This is what, this, what I do. Is but that a Chris, yes? Is that a yes? But, this, but Chris will hang for a little bit, and then I'll have to put on the burners. And you'll smoke him. I would have to put on the burners. And you would smoke him? Yes or no? Like I said, I will have to put on the burners. Can you just say a yes or no? Would you beat him or not? No, because you like to start shit. I would just, I would just, I would. No, because, okay. So I think we need a Chris Brown Flowmaster battle immediately. This is insane. <laughs> this needs to happen immediately. <laughs> There's no way Chris would beat you in a battle. The thing is with you, you have too many moves. You're too musical. You're probably the most musical. I mean, you got to be one of the most musical dancers I've ever seen in my life. And I would throw in, by the way, Lay Twins in that in that right. musicality. Right. And this I really would. And I would throw I would throw Kenny in there, um, in terms of yeah, in terms 100%. of people. Kenny's my right. favorite all around b boy. But mine too. Hey. He is, he is, I, when I started b-boying, I tried to be Ken Swift. I, I ain't try to walk like him. I try to wear my Where? hat like him. Okay. Like Let's everything just get back I try to do, I try to be like Ken Swift. One question before we move to that, and I'm going to ask you questions about k and everything. Where is the big battle with you and Chris Brown going to take place? People are asking. Why are you starting shit, boy? <laughs> why, why are you starting shit? <laughs> okay, listen, this is really important. Are yeah. why is K Mel not in Rocksteady? Rock, I mean, I, I mean, Crazy Legs put me in Rocksteady. Why is right. K Mel not in Rocksteady? One of the greatest dancers. Are, if you are agreeing with me that K Mel is one of the greatest dancers he, ever, he, he 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 is one of the greatest b boys that did it. Yes, he he has changed a lot of stuff in the b boy as far as the attitude, producers, um, 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 artists, all of them always wanted K Mel because of his attitude, like the way he carried himself. So he is definitely going to be one of the ranks of one of the top B boys out there. But why he wasn't in Rocksteady, that's something you got to ask Legs. I wasn't putting people in Rocksteady. Legs why are was. you not in Rocksteady now that I'm in Rocksteady? We're not in the same crew. We're in the same crew called Conscious Beings of Life. Right. We're I mean, we're family. But why right. are you not in my crew of Rocksteady? So, Stuff happens in between a crew, and I don't, you know, it just stuff happens, and you just got to move on. But one thing that I want people to understand, I will always be Rocksteady, because Rocksteady gave me my thing. If it wasn't for Rocksteady, remember, I was getting into trouble. Back in Gatesburg, Maryland, I was robbing. I was stealing cars. I was doing all kinds of stuff. Rocksteady saved me. Mr. Wiggles, I got to give props to Mr. Wiggles, because he was the one who really took me underneath his wing and found places for me to, to stay when I went to New York City. He put me in jam on a groove that turned into to um, 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 get original and get original turned into jam on the groove. And then Wiggles put me in Manhattan. And then Wiggles, the one that introduced me to Wit um, to Usher. If it wasn't for Wiggles, I would have never met Usher because Wiggles introduced me to Usher, and that's how all that started. So I gotta always give praise to mm -hmm. Rocksteady because they saved my life. But it comes a point when shit starts to happen inside the crew that I guess I don't agree with or stuff. I just gotta. I got to move on. But I have no hard feelings. I'm not talking Rocksteady is one of the best B-Boy crew that ever did it. And they have changed me in so many ways. Well, I mean, they think they change everything. I think without Rocksteady, you could argue you might have seen the extinguishing of the B-Boy culture because they platformed it on, you know, multiple platforms, including and not limited to Beach Street, you know, um, Wild Style, Style Wars. Yeah. You right. know, every, 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 you know, flash dance. Without Rocksteady Crew, you might not have the elevation of the game to where it is now on a global level. You needed them to pioneer the game. And you were part of the, I would say, the legit, like, second wave of Rocksteady. You were, like, one of the, like, when I was a kid and I would go to the park and, you know, Kenny and I lived, like, a block away from each other, you would see Kenny Buck for Kuriaki, Norm Ski, um crazy legs and then you would see the other kids that you probably never knew like ty fly right. carlos all these kids that i knew from the neighborhood who couldn't get in rock steady like myself but we were around it 
then Rocksteady blew up globally. And then in the, when did you join Rocksteady? The, the late 80s? 1993. 1993. Okay. But that was a grit. That was like the easy rock, Flowmaster. You were with like these, now the elevated Rocksteady when there was other people out there. But you were like a legit part of the early Rocksteady crew that those, the reason, like I said initially, that I knew you is because I had these VHS tapes of Rocksteady, whether it was like Rocksteady reunions or all these. You've seen those tapes. I mean, you're I've on seen those. The Zulu Animation, Animation when I called out Storm and Rizzio and all them and got my ass handed to me. Yes, I've seen it. Yes, you know, I. I, I and I watched them and I was like I remember going like who the fuck's this guy who is that guy like what who on God's earth is that guy and that's where you were I didn't see you locking I didn't even know you could lock you know but I knew you I hated super, locking I you hated, hated I could see that I hated locking I did not like I thought it was a stupid dance because locking is more of a friendly entertainment dance remember I was dealing with bully issues so people and fit fell right into my bully issues. Like anybody, like when, when I heard that Storm, Maurizio, and Emilio was coming to the Zulu Nation, and I heard that they was the best, I was like, I'm coming. They not bullying shit. They ain't taking it. Rocksteady is the best. So when I got there and saw them, and, and I ran over to Wiggles, I said, Wiggles, they're here. I'm about to battle all of them. And I got my ass destroyed. But I stayed in there, but Storm and Emilio, they put on them burners. They destroyed my <laughs> ass. They destroyed my ass. But I well, gave I'm, gonna, up. I'm gonna ask you a couple of questions that I, I a couple of questions that I had Neo. Uh, you know, Neo was on the podcast yesterday. I don't know. If, I mean, the Insta Live yesterday. Did you catch that? No, man. I, man, I was so busy building my kids and okay. Who cares? Like, who cares? Okay. Who cares? Why? My point don't is, don't say don't, don't man. No, don't I'm say just kidding. That. Don't say that. No, who? Listen. Who, who cares about it? You can catch it whenever. It's on Insta Live. But listen. If you had one person that's famous that everybody knows, not your mom or your wife. Get one person that was famous to narrate your life story. Who would that be? One person to narrate my story. That's just that's famous. Like yes, like Flowmaster came from Maryland, and he, you know, like the to narrate it's, your whole story. It's only one person that I that I feel right right now is Kevin Hart. Uh, oh, really, <laughs> Kevin Hart? Because my whole life was was just was terrible but it ended up funny because i'm a just i like i like to uplift people i love to make people laugh that's my thing and to see kevin hart explain my life oh my god that shit will be hilarious his mama that's told him to get that in the damn house and he didn't get in the house what did i tell you get in the like oh my god that would be hilarious <laughs> that's, a, that's a good uh that's an interesting response i could see that like if you have a because yeah kevin you know, you don't hear about all the hardships, but I'm sure he's been through hell and back to be where he is now, you know, and he feels, one thing you get about him, you feel kind of a light bulb, you know what I mean, with Kevin, yeah. you feel like just yeah. good light energy. I watched him and Atheon the other day have a snap. Yeah, they were, <laughs> you see, did you see it? Yes, I saw it. I, saw it. <laughs> Yo, said, Your hands are so <laughs> I watched that shit four times. I, I, I watched it so many times, I can't even tell you, but yo, I said, so I want to tell you this. So Neo said Morgan Friedman, oh. which I, that was good. Okay. And I said James Earl Jones. Oh, okay. Interesting. Everybody picked the black male, but okay, whatever. What, who, but every, who, would, who would you pick for my story? By knowing me, of knowing who I am, who would you pick? Because I see why not said, I don't, I don't see that. Um... I would say I like Kevin Hart for you. I really do. I think Kevin Hart's a good choice. Yeah. I think people, I, you know, it's an interesting question because uh, it makes you think about the narration of your own life in, in pure reflection through someone's eyes. Right. And it's nice to see because, you know, we know that through memories, like 70% of our memory is skewed. In other words, we don't really have a, a real understanding of what happened in our life right. and the story that we tell everybody is embellished over time and that's a neurological fact that we create shit that never happened right so some of it did happen but a lot of it didn't happen and so to have somebody else tell your story it feels a little bit more truthful that's right. all i don't know i would i wouldn't mind like i would also say maybe like 
maybe De Niro. I don't know. Robert I feel De Niro? Like, yeah, like he Robert was narrating. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, because he's, when I saw him narrate, when I heard him narrate Bron a Bronx Tale that he directed, have you seen right. a Bronx Tale? Of course, come the on. Man. Yeah, but oh, did you know he directed that? No, I now that I didn't know. Yeah, so he's wow. a good, he's a good, he's a good. So someone's saying they would have Joe Rogan narrate their life, Fab Five Freddy, <laughs> Bill Bryson, Denzel Washington, Usher, Robbie Robertson. Okay, I, the, I got this, it. The reason why I said Kevin Hart because my life, you know. I always been a kid who was always funny, always just trying to make people laugh and just have fun. I always look, even though stuff was negative, I always looked at stuff positive. And I listened to Kevin Hart's story, and it's like we almost the same thing with the dad being on drugs and all that stuff. Like it's almost ha almost had the similar. And the way he tells his story is almost like how I would want my story to be told. That's you know, interesting. Cause I don't because I don't want no one to ever hear my story and be like, oh, that's so sad. I want you to, you know, be enlightened by the stuff that I went through, but still laugh about it. Because I can laugh about it now. But before, you know, it wasn't that funny. But no, it's not funny. It because it made me who I am. Well, I think that's a key to everything. I think that if you are big enough, you're able to laugh at your own shit as traumatic and horrific as it has been. Someone else said Bernie Mac. Someone else said uh, Will Smith. Those are all good choices. Once again, yeah, yeah, I've seen Bernie Mac and I'm Bernie. Bernie. I'm sick of this shit. <laughs> Bill Cosby, why not? Are you okay? What's wrong with you? Yeah, <laughs> Bob Ross. Oh my lord. Um. So where where is Flow Master now, and will you be different and choose a different path after? Uh, after this era of time, in other words, well, I'm, choos I'm, I'm choosing a different path now. Like now, you know, I don't consider myself as a straight dancer no more. Like I don't call myself a b boy. Like I would never say b boy flow master anymore. It's just flow master. I'm just I don't I don't want people to think I'm just a b boy because I'm not just a b boy. I'm just I'm a dancer. I'm a father. I'm a husband. I'm a um, a trainer. I like to motivate people, you know, I'm a friend. So I want to be different. I do not want to be the same person that I was back in the um, 90s and all that. So everything so, so, about me is different. So where are you in, where are you in 10 years? Where am I in, in 10 years? I'm just, I hope I'm on stage motivating people because I do want to, and it's so funny that you said that. My biggest thing is I want to be an emotional speaker. I just I want to tell people my journey and I want to uplift people because I feel that I'm put on this earth to raise a family, better myself and better other people. That's what I feel. That is that is my journey right right now. And that's what I'm going to stick with until I die. Well, I think that's a that's a, a beautiful and a, a humble thing. And I think it's a 360 thing because you're you know, many times you know who they are. I know who they are we meet people who don't walk the walk and talk the talk. I think like you're one of the few people that are like, you talk about nutrition, you're in shape. You can take your shirt off at the beach. You know what I mean? There's not a lot of guys at how, well, how old are you now? No, you know what I mean? I, I'm embarrassed to take my shirt off. 47. What's that? You're 47 <laughs> and Flo, no, but it's true. Like my friend, so you know Troy, the certified health nut, this guy right here? Yeah, my yeah, friend, yeah, yeah. He's, he's, he's the truth. He's on every Tuesday. He's the truth. He walks the walk. He talks the talk. He doesn't, you know, he doesn't get into the bullshit. He tells it like it is. He works out. He does Qigong. He does breath work. He does um, a lot of uh, infrared saunas, ice plunges, but, but he does the hard work. You know what I mean? He does the hard work. You also, you do the hard work. No, I see you do the hard work. It's a, no doubt about it. As we get older, it is more difficult to do the hard work. You have your speedo game on fleek, which is like you're able to do stuff right. so that you can have your speedo game on fleek because you're putting in the hard work. How important right. is health to you and how right. much do you work out? 
health for number one health is number one to me before it wasn't now health is health is number one because if i'm not healthy how can i help my kids how can i be a good husband to my wife how can i help my friends health is number one because i can have all the money in the world i can have all the gadgets i can work out as much as i do but if my health goes bad None of that shit matters. And that's why I tell people, everybody's always want to lose weight. And everybody's like, I just want to lose weight and look good in this picture. And, and, and they sit there and say, I just want to lose weight because I got this movie coming up. But then when you sit there and you do stuff to make yourself unhealthy because you're trying to get good in this picture or you're trying to get good for this movie, then you jeopardize your health. And then none of that shit happens if they take you to the emergency room. Then the movie's gone and then the photo shoot is gone because you did shit that's unhealthy. If you take care of your health, Everything starts to happen. Everything starts to come. Everything you ever want in life will start to happen when you're healthy. How much do you work out? How much do you work out? How much do you work out every day? And, and what's your routine? Like, what's your what's your average workout routine? And how many hours do you put in? So before I just before I used to work out six days a week. I mean, two to three hours, and that was wrong. That's why I had 11 knee surgeries, 11 knee surgeries. The bodies never intend to work that hard. So now I do three times a week on shrimp, on, on shrimp training, like resistant bands or lifting weights, and I only do two, two times a week for cardio. That's it. Because my body, because now I'm getting older, so my body needs to keep my muscle on. So I got to focus more on strength work more than cardio. Because when I fight, I do cardio. When I dance, I just I do cardio. I don't need to go run, and I don't need to do all this other stuff to add extra cardio to destroy my muscles. I want to keep my muscle, not burn them. So that's why I make strength strength work mainly the best. You know, the main the main thing of my um, workout now. Weights, you're doing bands. Does that make sense? I'm just I'm doing resistant bands because when I lift weights, I get really big, and I don't want to look big. I just do a lot of resistant bands, a lot. Can you hear me? And we're freezing up. Yeah. Okay. Well, I resent resistant bands for me. Now, everybody else is different. It all depends on what you're trying to do. So it's all about what you want to do. I like resistance bands because I don't like to get bulky. Now that time, that's you. Boy, can't hear you. You have to go into another spot. Oh, you can't hear me. Okay, hold on. They, they can hear me, boy, but they can't hear you. You gotta be in another part of the house. Hey, Bubba. Okay, can you hear me now? Yeah, I hear you now. Okay, cool. So, you're not running at all? You're not doing any running and stuff like that? Well, I'm I'm only I'm only doing like aerobic fitness. The only the only time I do running is when I'm doing my aerobic fitness because the aerobic fitness is the number one thing that helps the blood use oxygen and open up the cells so the blood can get to all your uh, muscles and that's part of recovery. So I do that time after time, but mainly I don't do a lot of cardio because I do a lot of cardio when I dance and when I fight. So why do extra cardio? It doesn't make sense but what do you, to me. What, that's what, just, do you think the, what do you think the number one thing is as we get older? Like, what is the best thing to do for, for people keep who are just getting older? Keep your muscle mass on. Your, your muscle mass. You got mm -hmm. to keep your muscle mass, bro. You, you have to do some type of resistance and weight training. You have to. You know, I've heard a lot that the testosterone uh, – is produced when you do explosive stuff like deadlifting and sprinting. Yep. What do you do? You yep. sprint and deadlift? Yes, I am sprint. Yeah, yeah, a hundred percent. Because yeah, because remember, cardio kills your testosterone. Why you think a lot of the UFC fighters are always getting caught from juicing? Because their testosterone is going down because they're doing so much cardio. Mmm. That's that's, that's why. Remember, remember, we didn't have a lot of that stuff back back in the days. So the UFC was like what? They have one fight, then they do another one a month or two months later. Now, they like back to back, back, back to back. So they're not giving the guys the time to recover. So that so their testosterone starts to go down. When their testosterone goes down, they start getting estrogen. And when estrogen gets down, you can't recover. You can't lift. You can't move quick. Except if you're really that's young. That's you got to be careful. And, except and if you're yes, really, you're really young. young. I, and yes, that's called Wolverine body. Like if you look at John Jones, he was unstoppable, but now he's getting older. Now that shit's going to start catching up to you.
Anderson Silva, the same thing. Anderson Silva was eating McDonald's. He, man, listen, Anderson Silva used to eat two Big Macs and drink soda and go out there and knock everybody out. Mm. And now, yeah. now it's catching up to him. Is he still fighting or is that over? Yes, he has, he has two more fights on his contract, he said. Mm. So. Who, is the, who, is the, who is now your favorite athlete in the UFC? Be honest with you. The one, the one, the one who I'm really learning from that I, that he makes mistakes and he's coming back and I never saw it, but now he's starting to win me over. It's Conor McGregor. Hmm. <sighs> Interesting. <laughs> no, every, listen. Everybody has their own opinion. I love how he trains and how he thinks, and you know all the stuff that you see Conor does and he does all this. People make fun well, of him. But no, that's but, called mobility work. Mobility that's, work. But that's Lido Portal, right? That's yeah, that's Portal. Well, well, whatever, but it's all mobility work. So that's why when you see him in the um, ring, he's so loose and he's so up hit of the game because his body is so loose and so fluent. He can see yeah. stuff before you even see it. That's amazing. The way he makes mistakes and he comes to say, I make, I have made a mistake. And then he figures out how to fix that. That's incredible. Now I don't now I don't like how he is outside the ring. Like if he can fix that, if he can fix that temper outside the ring and keep it under control and start uplifting people with the power that he has, to me mm -hmm. he'd be one of the greatest. Because the man can talk, he got good showmanship, and he can fight. Come yeah, on. Yeah, no, man. he's no, he's yeah, Come he's on. definitely. How many fights? Name, name one fighter that you know that has all these three. The only one that I can name is GSP, George St. Pierre. Who is not really as much of a else. fighter? Anderson. I would say GSP is not much as not as much of a fighter as he is an athlete. I don't think that he likes to fight. I don't think he likes to inflict pain on somebody. Yeah, exactly right. But he still was one of the greatest that knew how to talk. That he beat some of the best fighters, and he acted good outside the ring. Yeah, no, now, he's. If Conor McGregor can master that outside the ring, he'd be unstoppable, bro. Yeah, no, for sure. And John Anderson Silva could have been that, but his not learning how to speak is the well, thing that messed he, him up. That he's English. No, no, no. I, I I know that, but you know to be, I know, but to be huge in the UFC. You know, it's all about how well that you can speak. You already know that. Yeah, of course. They say it time after time. Of course. You know, they can't never give you movie roles because you can't speak. Yeah, no, trust me. I, I get it. It's uh, That's all I'm saying. I mean, they gave Rhonda the, uh, you know, the opportunity because she was a white woman who was pretty with blonde hair. You know what I mean? But she was not as nice as she could. There's a lot of contributing factors to stardom in any sport, you know right. what I mean? Right. Very rare do you have a Michael Jordan who was everything and great on camera and good and looking. Great. And exactly. He was everything, you know, you, he had and yeah. Muhammad Ali as well, except Muhammad Ali wasn't apolitical. He had a subversive, irreverent mentality towards the war and towards, you know, the government. And so right. we, 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 uh, we, put, we as a country punished him and then realized later that we were as a government wrong so there was an, an indelible scar that also had to be kind of healed and so that was part of muhammad ali's right. you know and, and you know the same the same is really true for kareem you know i'm friend i'm i don't know if you know this but i'm good friends with kareem abdul jabbar and he's another okay. guy who's like you know he's a great guy but he's also misunderstood but I'd say he's one of the living, most important legends on planet Earth. Right. He's done. Right. You know, he was there with Malcolm X. He was there with Muhammad Ali. He was there. Bruce with, Lee and everybody. Yeah, but like he was, he was one. He was. One, he was a, anytime you have a political viewpoint, you know, people have a tendency to uh, put you on blast, especially right. if it's countercultural. And right. against the grain, which is what Kareem was, which was what Muhammad Ali was. You never really got a handle on it. Yeah.
You're cracking out again, boy. <sighs> Fucking Instagram. Um, but I think that uh, I think that's a good observation about GSP. Can you see me? Yeah, I see you now. So, uh, can you hear me? Yep. How how is it where you are in terms of? Because uh, you're in California, I'm in California, but you're a, you're in a different part of California. Are people there scared? Are people there starting to open up? What's the vibe? Man, pe man, people is walking their dogs. People's at the beach. People swimming. Man, people not man. Listen, people not worried about this shit. People gotta go out. People need to get out. You know, a lot of uh, a lot of people's not worried about it for some reason, and I don't know why, but they're not. So. Okay, so people people are like living over there because people in my neighborhood are wearing a mask. People are um, putting on neighborhood watch that this person's not wearing a mask and getting afraid. But I, I, I'm you. I think people need to. Backing out again, boy. Fear mongering anything. That should be a crime. That's a crime against humanity to fear, to make people afraid. They need to start having people get sunshine with their masks off, swim, clean water, good plant-based foods, and no more fear. If anybody puts out fear, they should be punished. Those are the people that should be punished because fear is a disease. It's true. It's too much fear. It's too much people being afraid. So I think everybody needs to put on like, let's talk about health and nutrition. That should be the mo that should be the media right now. But you know what? They're not going to do that because that doesn't make money. Fear and being sick is what making money. You you look at the school thing. They're not teaching kids how to take care of themselves. They're not teaching the kids how to be healthy. They're not teaching us how to be healthy. That's true. No, they're making people, McDonald's, and I, you know, yeah, I knew something was no, wrong with McDonald's no, as a center. People need to get on. Listen, people need to get on their health plan because my health plan is not going to be good for your health plan because your body is different than mine. I got so many injuries. I I went through so much stuff. You got to figure out what works for you. Get on your health, your health plan. Be the best nutrition for you because my best nutrition is myself. I figure out what foods I need to eat and what foods I don't need to eat for me. And you need to do the yeah. same. For them, and once people for start sure. doing that, they are going to see how amazing they feel. And I think also it's really important to take that mask off because it's it's disconnecting us from connection and it's disconnecting us from breathing. And I feel like every time I put it on, I'm, I'm going to to death. I mean, I really feel like I'm going to die. Well, well, you, well, you're sucking your CO2 back in. Like we got John um, John Happerman that just joined. I don't know if John is still on. But John Hackman is Chuck Liddell's trainer, and he's a good friend of mine, and, he, and I just saw him down there. John, John Hackman talked about that. Like, y'all got to join his show, too. He talks about how bad that is with the mask and how to suck your CO2 back in your mouth and all that. That's really bad because you want to get rid of the CO2. Yeah, no, I can feel it. I can feel it. When I put it on, I feel like, oh, my God, I feel like I'm asphyxiated. So that's a good point. Yes. Flo, we only have yes. a minute left. I wanted to thank oh, you. Good. You're my favorite. You're my hero. I can't stress how many people uh, need to watch Flow because your dancing's incredible and your son is out of control good too. Oh, my son is going to destroy me. My son no, is going to yeah, destroy me. You guys me. are incredible. Yeah. You guys thank are incredible, you, man. Uh, I love you and thank you so much for doing this and thank you everybody out there. Thank uh, y'all for watching. And get your, uh, get your vitamins in, coconut, it, and hemp, coconut and hemp and, uh, and dates. All day, every day. Love you, bro. Peace. All right. Peace out, boy.